Goldman Sachs chief economist, head of global investment research, Jan Hatzius, is here at Post 9 to go through both of those things. Jan, great to see you. Wonderful uh, to be here. Undercut almost every expectation on the street. Um, just talk to me about the print. I thought it was broadly weaker than what we expected, and I think if you look at the reaction of the bond market, clearly weaker than what the market was pricing in. And I don't think it was weak in a very concerning way. We still printed 150,000 headline payrolls, you know, a little over 180,000 if you add back the strikers. And household employment was down a lot, but if you adjust it for the definitions of the payroll survey, it was actually up somewhat. So it was a softer report that I think underscores the message that the market took out of the FOMC meeting this week, namely that the Fed is very likely done hiking, but I wasn't particularly concerned about a much sharper downdraft. Right. Between the Treasury refunding, the Fed presser, and now this, has it changed your views about 24 at all at the macro level? No. We still expect growth at about 2% in, in 2024, and we think that inflation is going to continue to come down gradually. But we still have it a little above 2% in the fourth quarter of next year. And so I would agree with the idea that it still will be a while before the Fed is going to start cutting in our baseline forecast. However, what I think is very important is that they can cut if things were to weaken more sharply. That is now an option that is an additional insurance policy against the recession that wasn't available six months ago or 12 months ago. We mentioned a lot of the weak spots in the in the jobs report, but it but you're right. I mean, it's not like the labor market is collapsing. We still, as of September, had 9.6 million job openings. We still have historically low weekly unemployment claims filed by Americans. I think one percent of the labor market is is on unemployment checks. So, is is it a tight labor market or not? It's a tight labor market, but it's becoming very gradually less tight. It's moving into, into balance more. You're right that the job openings numbers over the last few months have been more stagnant, and that's true not only if you take the jolts numbers, but also some of the bottom-up numbers. So still, it's still a tight labor market, no question, but in much better balance than it was a year ago. Another indicator you can look at is the quit rate. Uh, also in the JOLTS report, that's at the level that it was at in February 2020. And I think that also says, you know, it's still a strong labor market, but not as sort of outsized tight as it was a year ago. So this all feeds into your view and I think the Fed's view that, that the work is being done, inflation is coming down, growth is slowing, but not recession. What would, what would cause you to get a little bit more worried about the downside risks as we do start to weaken here? That's right. It, it is consistent with that baseline view. What would make me more concerned? I mean, obviously, you always want to respond to high-frequency data. I'm not seeing anything particularly concerning there. What are, what are potential concerns? Well, conflict in the Middle East. You do think about oil prices. The economy is less sensitive to oil prices than it used to be, U.S. in particular, because the U.S. is now a net exporter of oil. But that's something to watch. And I think the adjustment to a more normal real interest rate environment after 15 years of very, very low real rates, I mean, we are still in the process of that. And so that could certainly cause some adjustments. Housing is an obvious place where we probably will see more weakness. Commercial real estate also ca already came up. I do think that's probably more of a multi-year adjustment, but those are the things to watch.